Hello everyone, Colin Kanat here for Woodwork Web. Today we're doing another little kitchen project. We're going to be making this super little pizza peel. And the word peel just means tool, so it's a pizza tool. Stick around and watch how we make this. Well, I've collected together uh, some of the boards that I'm going to use for this pizza peel and I'm going to laminate a few boards together. So I want to use some contrasting wood. So I have some purple heart here. I have some holly uh, and then there's the sort of the carcass or the base of what I'm going to be using, which in this case is some red alder. But I wanted to show you the holly. Look at how twisted this board is. Let's talk about that for a second. Now look at... Look at the twist on this board. You know, if you were to take this entire board and try and flatten it, you'd probably end up with almost nothing because to run it through the jointer to get one flat edge, uh, it's just it's it's just not going to work. It's probably the most twisted board I've ever worked with. So what we do when we have wood that is this badly twisted, we take the minimum amount that we need. And in my case, I'm going to be working with a about 14 or 15 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, uh, there's 16 inches right there. And when we look at this part here, when I measure that, now when you look at that part right there, that's not that bad. There's a little bit of a twist in there, but it's not that bad. I could work with that. And the way I do that is we cross cut that, but then we use uh, strips of this on the bandsaw and that allows us to make the most use of a twisted board like this. There now you can see that's a little bit better and I cut it a little bit longer uh, than the mark there but uh, let's take this over to the bandsaw now and cut some strips. Now I'm just going to mark some lines on there and this is the easiest way of doing that. Now the reason that doing something like this with a twisted board is relatively safe on a bandsaw is because all the pressure is going down. The bandsaw blade is pushing the wood down. There's, there's no kickback on a bandsaw. Now I'm over at the jointer and I'm going to do two sides of this. Let me show you a close up of what I'm going to do. So what I'm doing first of all is I'm going to find the flattest edge and believe it or not there's quite a difference on this piece of wood. This is definitely the flattest side. And I'm going to take my paddles and I'm going to find the flattest area and I'm not going to move from that. I'm going to run through probably three or four times uh, and that will give me a flat surface. When I get that flat surface I'm going to find the next flattest surface and I'll use the first surface that I made and push that against the fence so that I can make two sides that are 90 degrees and both flat. Okay, that's given me two flat sides that I could now take to the table saw and trim safely. 
I'm at the table saw and I'm about to install my Freud glue line rip blade. And the reason I like to use this blade is it gives such a crisp edge that you don't even need to use the jointer after. So it actually saves me a step. Now I've set the table saw and I've had to remove the blade guard on because I can't get in close enough with it on. So let's go ahead and get started. Now before I start trimming up this wood, I just want to take a second, if you haven't already subscribed, I'd love you to do that. Uh, and don't forget to click the little gear icon so you get notifications every time I upload a new video. Okay, we're ready to do the glue up now. Uh, and I like to lay this film down here, this very, this is uh, just packing film and it prevents the black spots that sometimes you'll get when the iron and the glue react. When you lift the clamps up, you'll find sometimes find black spots. So that's one way of eliminating that. So I'm not going to make you sit through all of this because all it is is spreading glue and putting things together, but uh, we'll get a start on it and uh, we'll show you what this thing looks like once we get it all glued up. Whenever you're doing glue ups, I always recommend you put on lots of glue so that you don't get any voids anywhere. And I always recommend that you put glue on both surfaces. There we go, that gives you a bit of a preview of what this is going to look like. I'm going to put a clamp in the middle too. I want to run some tape down there. Well, there's our raw, our raw pizza peel uh, right out of the glue and uh, it's it's nearly ready to go. What I want to do now is I want to cut down. I need to cut this jagged out of here. This knot. Uh, I want to cut down like this and over in here. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go into my sanding area and I'm going to give this a good sanding. Okay, I've done some serious sanding on this pizza peel. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use my roundover bit in my trim router just to ease the edges off this. It'll just save me a lot of sanding and that's it. just uh, a quick way of doing that. Now I just did a little bit of uh, edge sanding uh, by hand, it's all done. I'm going to put uh, a finish on this and the only reason I'm going to do this is just because you can see how it makes the wood pop. The best finish in my mind, the best finish is no finish at all. But I'm doing this so that we can see what the, uh, the wood looks like. 
I'll put a link to the video I did on finishes for cutting boards and so on. Uh, and you can make up your own mind what you want to put on, whether it's walnut oil or whether it's mineral oil or any of the other products that are available. But you can see how, what a lovely, what a lovely change that makes there. Well, and that concludes our pizza peel. And, and you know, it's got three coats of Osmo on it. The Osmo is going to last forever on there. It's food safe uh, and it looks really good. My only warning is if you're going to be making one of these, don't, don't use it while you've got friends and family around because uh, inevitably they're going to find out that you made it and you're, they're going to want you to make one for them as well. So unless you're looking for orders, you might want to use an old spatula or something to take the pizza out. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the little gear icon so that you know every time I upload a new video. We got lots more videos coming your way.